Welcome to this introduction to computational chemistry at Valparaiso University using Gauss View and Gaussian 09. I'm Stan Zygmunt of the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And you may be wondering what a professor of physics and astronomy is doing teaching computational chemistry. Well, it turns out that the research that I do, although I am trained as a physicist, is at the intersection between physics and chemistry and chemical engineering and material science. It's very interdisciplinary in nature. And so this tool, the tools uh, Gauss View and Gaussian 09, although they're traditionally regarded as computational chemistry tools, they have application in many different areas. What we're going to do in this session is something very modest. I first will show you how to connect to our server and to open the Gauss View program. And we'll be using Gauss View to build a molecule. I'll show you how to set some of the preferences that you'll find helpful in using Gauss View, how to use the builder and view windows to actually create a molecule, and then how to use the mouse or keypad to rotate and resize a molecule for visualization purposes. Then secondly, we'll use Gauss View to submit a calculation to the main computational workhorse program, which is Gaussian 09. We'll show how to set up the calculation, how to save the input file, and then submit the calculation. And then, since the calculation won't take very long, we'll be able to examine the results in real time. So that's the goal for this session. First then, let me show you how to connect to the server that you will use to do these calculations. I assume that you already have installed on your machine uh, two programs. Uh, one of them, the PuTTY program, which will allow us to actually enter commands and tell the server what to do. Um, and then also the XMing program, or some other program to allow us to visualize through X windows the graphical displays that the Gauss View program creates. So the first step, assuming that you have those programs uh, installed on your machine, is to run them both. And first, I'm going to my programs list to run XMing. And all uh, when you click on that, you won't see any evidence that it's running, except for an icon down here on your taskbar. I'm using a, a Windows 7 laptop. And so uh, then once I have that running, then I can go to the PuTTY program. And I have it here as a quick launch. So I click on PuTTY, and then the session, I'll show you how to create a session for the server that you'll be connecting to. And uh, the machine is called M0. And so the host name, or the IP address, is m0.valpo.edu. And so that's all you need to uh, type in there. What I like to do, though, is uh, save the session as a, a name so that when I want to connect to the server again in the future, I won't have to type in so much stuff. So let's just call it uh, new server. You can Any name that you want uh, would be fine here. Uh, I have actually already created something called M0, but I just want to show you how to do this. So that's going to be the session name. But before I save it, I need to go over here and customize it just a little bit by clicking on the SSH tab and going to X11. And you have to make sure that you check the box called X11 forwarding, which will allow the graphical display that's actually generated by a program on the server to be displayed on your computer. So then, once I've done that, I go back up here to the session. All right, and I have, again, the IP address for the server, my name session, and then I'm going to save it. So save. And you see now that's been added down here, something called new server. So just to show how you will usually access this, I'm going to shut the program down. So I'm going to cancel right now. So then I'll, I'll go back and run PuTTY again. And you'll see that session new server is there. So you click on that, click on load, and then the settings and the IP address will be uh, run. And now when I open, I'll get a window here asking me to log in. And your uh, professor of your course or your research supervisor will have already given you your username and password. So I'm just going to log in with mine. And so this shows my username as Zygmunt at M0, because M0 is the front end for our server. You connect to that first from uh, within the university, 
but we're not going to run calculations on M0. If everyone did that, that machine would get really, really slow. So instead, you and perhaps your partner or uh, research team member will be assigned a particular node, uh, which is a computing engine, to do your calculations. So the very first thing you'll do is use the secure shell command to connect to that compute node. And the compute nodes that many of you will be using, you type SSH minus capital Y, and the capital Y is important for image processing purposes, and then the compute nodes all have names like this, compute dash one dash another number from 0 uh, to 10. And so I'll just use 0, compute dash one dash 0, but you'll use whichever machine your instructor or your research advisor has told you to use. So when I do that, then I immediately am now connected to that machine, and from this point, as long as I have that XMing program running, and I can check and see over here, yep, there's the icon for it, XMing is running, I can type the command GV space ampersand, and GV stands for Gauss View. It will run the Gauss View program. It may take just a second for the window to pop up, okay, and there's a little error message here, uh, but it's not going to affect the performance, and so I'm just going to minimize the terminal window. And so here I have what is called the uh, builder window for Gauss View, and I'm going to move it around just a little bit. I can move it to a convenient place. And at this point, we want to uh, set a couple of the preferences. So under File, there's Preferences here. And you can play around with all sorts of different settings. But I'm going to suggest a few that you might want to try out. And one of them is Display Format. So if I click on Display Format, there's several options here. Uh, and the one I want to check is Show Symbols. So that when I build a molecule, the atomic symbols for each atom will automatically be shown. Then when I go up here to Text, I've already changed the text size when it draws in symbols uh, for atoms. I think the default is 18, but you'll probably want to increase that a little bit. I set it to 36, which may be too large for your preference, but uh, you might want to resize that just a little bit. So uh, I suggest 36. Now I'm going to go to the building option here, and the mode uh, when you open Gauss View may say default, but click on custom here and custom allows you to set something that's helpful which is this last one down here automatically select hot atom and then the default may be something different but if I choose for all fragments uh, that's that's the important uh, one to have set right there's two options there's just for bio fragments or for all fragments so click for all fragments uh, is there anything else I want to set let's see uh, there's there's all kinds of different things you can play with but I think for now that's good enough. So I will click... Uh, oh, wait, one more thing. Window behavior. Right. You may want to set Gauss View Preference so that the new view window opens up on startup, which means when you start Gauss View, you'll not only get the uh, builder window, which is the one that's already open, but you'll get the view window, which is where you can actually build a molecule. So let's let me go ahead and do this. And now I'm going to close the program and go back to my terminal, the putty terminal, and run it again just to show you because those preferences that I just changed don't take effect until I open the program of a new time. So now it's going to open up and you'll see that this window here, which is the view window, now opens automatically. And so you also see that the symbols for this methane molecule that are in the builder window are uh, displayed as well. So the preferences that I changed have now taken effect. So what I want to do here is just very quickly show you how to build a molecule. A simple molecule, something you're familiar with, so we'll pick ethanol. The first thing is that when you open Gauss View, it's already set up here. I, I type, uh, click on this upper left-hand button, and basically it gives me a periodic table with all the different elements uh, in the periodic table that I can choose, and carbon is selected by default. So I'll just stick with that, but you'll see that there are several different options for carbon depending on what kind of bonding it's going to have to neighboring atoms. So by default, the tetrahedral carbon is selected, so we'll go with that. And then if I just click inside the view window, I get a methane molecule, right? Like that. So I would like to add to this, by, by default, the uh, hydrogens are bonded to the carbon. 
but I can actually now move the cursor and click on one of those hydrogens again and see I still have the, the carbon tetrahedral uh, element fragment selected so when I click on this the hydrogen gets replaced by a methyl group so now I have ethane right and now let's do one more thing let's let's now replace one of the hydrogens with an OH group so that we can create ethanol to do that we go back to the element fragment and now we're gonna pick oxygen so we select oxygen there's the oxygen atom there's a double bonded oxygen and then there's the the uh, uh, standard uh, uh, oxygen that's bonded to two neighbors so I'm gonna click on that and if I now click on one of the hydrogens it gets replaced with an OH group right so now you can see that we've built ethanol now you can't see all the atoms so now I will show you how you can rotate and resize this molecule in the view window so you want to left click on your mouse or on your keypad use the left button and then if you drag while you are holding that down you can rotate the molecule and this is very helpful to get different uh, views along different directions for that molecule here you can see that you've got a staggered configuration uh, for the the two methyl groups and then the OH is uh, down here there's a certain uh, default choice that the program makes when you just uh, create a molecule and build it and of course we can change bond lengths and we can change bond angles if we want to but we'll just leave it here because the program usually when you build a molecule in the view window sets things up to a pretty convenient uh, choice of initial geometry so now we've created this molecule and uh, I said you could not only rotate it but you could resize it so again here's left click rotates it all right but now that's uh, if I move the uh, my my finger to the on the keypad whoops what did I just do look what I did I accidentally clicked inside this window and since I have oxygen uh, selected as an element fragment it put a new oxygen fragment in there and that's annoying the nice thing though under edit is you can undo which is also control Z so you'll probably have to do that a lot if you want to avoid having that happen you can go back over to the builder window and click on the question mark which is called inquire and it changes to inquire mode and so if I now click inside this window I, I hear a tone because it's like an error message but nothing else happens so now I can rotate this molecule and then uh, that's moving the cursor uh, up and down or right and left but I can also if I uh, right click I can if I move my uh, the mouse to the right or to the left you can see it rotates and if I move it up or down it resizes the molecule right and so you can do lots of different things here to make the molecule look bigger or smaller uh, whatever is helpful in visualizing it so the right click and the left click give you lots of different possibilities and now you may find uh, after you've done a number of these things that the molecule no longer fits inside the window and so rather than resize the window there's a cool tool over here that's called the recenter tool and it's over here right there okay the center molecule in view so if I click on that then whoops if I click on that it takes the molecule and puts it right in the center of my window which is kinda helpful then I can make it smaller or larger if I want but basically if you're happy with the molecule that you've created now you can submit a particular kind of calculation to Gaussian 09 there's a calculate button Gaussian calculation setup we choose that and now well, I have to decide what kind of calculation I want to do and I'm gonna move some windows around here so they're not overlapping so much I will just choose one very simple thing I can do and the job type <coughs> the job type that I want to pick will be an optimization calculation which means it's going to take the initial geometry uh, in my window and it's gonna move the atoms around just a little bit until it finds the most stable configuration the equilibrium configuration where the forces on all the atoms will go toward zero that's what equilibrium means there's a number of different methods that you can use when you do an optimization calculation so I click on the method tab and one that uh, is a very quick uh, handy one to use if I go to the middle tab and click on that button is to use a semi empirical quantum mechanics approach and then there are several versions of that so on the right hand tab here I'm gonna choose AM1 
AM1 is a standard kind of method that is used in simplified quantum mechanical calculations. It's not going to give the best quality results, but often if we're looking at different conformers of a particular molecule and we want to find out which one is more stable, this method can be uh, pretty useful, even though it's not the highest quality method that we could pick. All right, so that's the method. The title tab, I can give it a title here. I can type this in and say, this is an ethanol AM1. That's the method. Optimization calculation. Now, you don't have to put a title in, but it can be helpful. And all of the other options here are things that you generally won't have to worry about unless you're doing a more advanced calculation. Uh, so I'm just going to say I'm basically done here. So I'll go to Submit. And you'll see there's always a requirement that I save the input file before I submit it to Gaussian. All right, so I save it. I could cancel here, but then that would uh, abort the calculation. So I'm going to save it and give it a name. Uh, my directory here on the server has lots of folders in it because I've done lots and lots of calculations. You may decide to create folders for different calculations or for different lab assignments or projects. Uh, I have a folder here that's called Chem221. So I'm going to double click on that. And then my file name, I'll just type in the chemical uh, uh, structural formula for ethanol, which is CH3CH2OH. And uh, it, the file type is Gaussian input file, so it's going to add the suffix .com on here. And that's fine. So I save it. Right? And now it's going to say, save the file, submit the following file to Gaussian. I will click OK. And right now, it's not obvious that anything's happening. But if I go up to Results, and I click Stream Output File, a new window will open up. And I can, again, move things around here so they're not overlapping so much. And this window will show the output file that's being generated as the calculation's running. You'll see that more lines are added to the bottom, and everything scrolls up. And it really won't take very long at all for this calculation to finish. Ah, right there, Gaussian job completed. Would you like to open the following? Uh, result file. And the one we want to open usually is the log file. So I'll click on log, and it's important to click Read Intermediate Geometries, Gaussian Optimizations Only, because I'd like to know not just what the final geometry is, but what some of the intermediate ones are that the program went through. Okay, so a new window opens, and you'll see right here, this says image 1 of 5 which means that in five different steps, the calculation went from the initial structure that I gave it to the final equilibrium structure. So what's being displayed right now is structure number one. And if I just use the up arrow, I can click on that and go to two. You'll see it moves a little bit. Three, four, five, and that's the last one. All right, so that's the equilibrium structure. And if I wanted to, I could look at the bond angles. I'll just show you an example. When you're in the inquire mode, where the question mark has been selected, if you go to this window, if I want to know what the carbon-carbon bond distance is, I just click successively on the two carbon atoms, one and two, and then down in the lower left-hand corner, I can see that that bond distance for this equilibrium structure was found to be 1.51 angstroms. All right, and I can do that if I, if I go to the oxygen now, what that will do is give me the bond angle between the carbon, carbon, and oxygen. See, there's an A equals, so 107.347. And then I could go even one step further and click on the final hydrogen the o in the OH group, and that would give me the dihedral angle, or the torsion angle, uh, that, that it would take to rotate atom 1 to the position of atom 4 uh, around an axis that goes through the two atoms in the middle, atom 2 and atom 3. So that dihedral angle uh, also might be useful to know sometime. All right, um, one other thing, I'll close the window here with the output file, but I'm going to go back for just a moment to the Results tab and click on Results, and uh, there's a summary. When the calculation's finished, there's a summary file, and that summary file has information that you might want to use. It's got the energy in particular. It's got the energy of the calculation here. So the E value, Right where it says E and then AM1 uh, tells me what the energy is in atomic units. And that's an important quantity, especially if I want to look at two different conformers of the same molecule. Because whichever one has the lower value of this energy is the one that's more stable. 
All right, so there's a lot more we could do. We could open up the entire output file and scroll through it and get information on the charges that are on these atoms and all kinds of other stuff. But for now, I hope this has been a helpful introduction for how to set up a calculation and how to run a simple calculation using Gauss View and Gaussian.